Hallo und willkommen hier im Studio beim Horcore. Äh, wir haben heute hier vier Gäste zu Gast und das sind The Fame aus Australien. Ich würde sagen, wir fangen an mit den Jungs und reden über ihr neues Album und was sie sonst noch so angeht. So guys, welcome. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for yeah, being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you just announced more or less your new album, right? Yes, absolutely. Just the other day, freshly announced. Yeah, what's the name of it? Talk, talk. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be like, talk, talk. Okay. <laughs> so that would be my first, first question. Um, what is the background of that name? So, yeah, why talk, talk? So talk, talk was actually... A, from a it was a lyric from a song which actually didn't end up making it onto the album <laughs> so we're like oh we thought this song would make it onto the album but then it didn't but it's okay and the the lyrics talk talks just sort of stuck with us like throughout the rest of the whole recording <laughs> process because a lot of how this album has formed and our personal development over the years and as musicians comes out of conversation True. like the amount of conversing we have done just between ourselves about you know our writing about what we feel like this band is yeah that without those conversations this album wouldn't be what it is what right it? now and it's not even just with us like the amount that we've learned from the people that we work with and you know that's just like one of the reasons why like talk talk just kept on coming back yeah. because that's what it is it's like conversation and Yeah, and like these songs speak for themselves, you know, and like something that like is, that. <laughs> that is true. So I'm not sure if that's a real fact, but I've read you live on several continents. That's true. Yeah? That is true. Is that you? Well, I live in Australia. Okay. We live in like different cities mainly. Like um, Lyndon lives in Perth. I live in Melbourne. Steve lives in LA and Josh is a traveler. He mm -hmm. travels from city to city. You I live everywhere, everywhere essentially. <laughs> So how is that possible to create music when you're all in different places? Technology. I think, I think, yeah, technology. That's something that we had to figure out, I think, um, because we started the writing process all together in Perth um, and then we were there for a while, obviously because of the pandemic, and then after that sort of, uh, like, sort of borders opened and everyone went back to where they were living previously, mm -hmm. we sort of had to figure out how to write over the internet, basically, yeah. which we'd never done before. Um, yeah. So you've written the al whole album on different places. So you've been in L LA and you've been everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. So is that something you will do for the next album again? Who knows? We don't know, yeah. yeah. It changes by the day, doesn't it? Hopefully not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so are you working together as a group? Like in person, or is that okay for you to be in different places? Yeah, a lot of this album has been a mixture of both. So cool. songs like Ease My Mind yeah. and Flowers were all written when all four of us were together. And then a bunch of the other songs uh, were written like much in the later stage when yeah. we were everywhere. So you have like a specific time to come together and have like talk on the phone about it and write together? Yeah, we kind of just like, I don't know, it's, we just, what Steve was saying about opening up communication, we just, the sort of the phone lines were always open, you know, yeah, you could cool. just call someone when you have an idea or, or um, you know, something comes up, just give somebody a ring. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't want to no, interrupt No, 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 please go. So yeah. do you think that's like, that's getting more common to say as a band, hey, we don't need to be at one place, we can be everywhere in the world and write our music? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of essential for us now because every, well, you know, we're all three different cities that we sprawl across and we can't put it all, well, can't come to a grinding halt <laughs> if we're not together because we just never get anything done. <laughs> so, yeah, it, <laughs> it's just been a big learning process, like figuring out the best way to write either on the phone or like in person or sending ideas back and forth. Like, and every song on the album was done in a different way as well. Like no two were the same. That's like great. Every, everyone, has, every song is like a different set of circumstances and the way that it was done. But that's also a lot of work, huh, to to work together like that. And it is. Wow. It definitely is. So yeah, I would I would start to talk about the new album. And my first question is like, in in which aspects is the new album different to the last one? I think sonically, it's more cohesive. I think mm -hmm. that's something we really wanted to focus on this time around. Um, and I think. 
it's a little bit of a step, like a progression towards the future and where we want to go. As a, yeah, I feel like we've all learned how to write together a lot better and we've refined our sound a little bit more and hopefully people like it. Oh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That sounds good. So um, I read you you worked with several producers together, right? Mm. With three? Yeah, I guess three, yeah. Yeah, with three. Um, and like, how's, how was it for you? What, what kind of experience made you with them? Is there any special moment you had with the producer? Yeah, I think like the, the di a lot of the differences with the producers that we worked with were that some songs were written like with a certain producer. Mm -hmm. So like one of our songs, The Alchemist, was written with Matt yeah. Pauling. But then also a lot of other songs we did with Matt, we recorded six with him. Oh, wow. Um, yes, which was awesome to like do, you know, more than half the album with one person. Yeah. But a lot of them came from songs that just we had written. And then we went with Matt to produce those up, which is very different from what we've done before in the past where every single song that we wrote was with a certain producer and that got produced out which I think uh, lends itself to Lyndon's point about this album being more cohesive mm -hmm. is because a lot of the songs stemmed from us and then we chose like who we thought would be best for that song. And for a lot of the album, that was Matt because he's incredible. So you picked the producers. They, yeah. We picked yeah, they, they pick us as well. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a two-way street. It's <laughs> like it's on, you pick and thank you for holding that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank, I will hold it. I'll get to Oh, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is exciting. Um, yeah, it goes both ways, you know, and we have a great relationship with Matt. We've worked with Matt for years, actually, now, which is awesome. And yeah, um, really it was able to, you know, it's kind of like friends working together. You right. know, every time we're in the studio with him, it's always a lot of fun, you know, and we always, you know, there's, there's just so many walls are broken down beforehand. If you go with a new person, there's just inherent things that happen sometimes because you don't know someone and that's right. just normal. But with Matt, it was great because we had that previous relationship. So would you work with several producers again for the next record? Or would you say we will stay with one person? I question. think, like, I, I personally would like to try something different and work for an album just with one person. Mm -hmm. Whether that's the next album or yeah. another album, I don't know. Um, I guess it's hard when we all live in different spots. Yeah, but if we're, if, we, if we're all together at some point, that would be fun. I mean, you have enough time. You have yeah. enough time to try it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll see. So let's see what's going to be the next album. Um, yeah, I have a, like a creative question. So is there a special place where you would like to hear your music? Like in a disco, in an airplane, <laughs> on a road trip or somewhere? Well, that's a good question. I think we can all answer that. You go first, Dave. We'll go around. Well, it's funny that you say aeroplane because I've, I've actually thought of this. So, <laughs> but before, yes. so you know how when you're on an aeroplane looking for a movie TV, there's the music section. Right. I'm like, man, how cool would it be? And I actually do think this. I'm like, how cool would it be when you're just on a random flight? Because I'm sure we wouldn't get told this. So we'd be looking at it for the first time and then we would see our music <laughs> on, the, on the little seat in front of us. Like, that would be cool. That would be, that would be pretty cool. Right, yeah. That's mine. God, I don't think I can top Steve's. That's pretty funny. Um, oh, I don't. I'm not too sure. I'm honestly just happy to hear our music anywhere. Really, you know, it's it's always exciting. Aww. It's never something. It's never something. Yeah, yeah here we go. <laughs> Typical vocalist, just covering all bases. Um, no, but it's, it's something you, you never really get tired of, you know, and especially if you see other people enjoying it, that's always exciting. The one thing I always enjoy is having family members send songs that they've heard somewhere as well and, like, that always is such a great feeling, seeing family or friends. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah, especially because we're away, it's hard to keep in contact a lot and sometimes when we're away, it's almost like an unspoken communication sure. when other people hear our songs and stuff. It opens that line up again. That's what I love probably the most out of it. I'm going to say, like... A spaceship, like <laughs> Elon Musk. No, yeah. I think like God. music, pl like in space, would be cool. So like we, Ramstein. It wouldn't be us. <laughs> Have you heard what Ramstein has? No, no, you didn't hear. Yeah, they really? sent. What was that? They sent the song to a spaceship, and it was the first time where it was played or something. No, 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 no. see, that's cool. That's very cool. That's, that's that's really cool. Awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's my answer. Look, I, I don't know about a special place, but I did have a mo we had a moment on tour where we heard our music in a random location. Yeah. We got in a taxi 
and about it was in the oh, Czech Republic, Czech Republic. Yeah. and about five minutes into the ride, I was in the I was with Josh, yeah. I think our tour manager, I can't remember who else, but yeah, Summer is a curse came on the radio and, and we were like, we didn't what notice the it. hell? <laughs> we didn't oh, that's yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's that's, that's a really I don't know, I find it strange when you hear it's like, oh there's Josh singing on in the Czech Republic car radio, like yeah. what is going on? Weird coincidence. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is true. That's so funny actually. Yeah. <laughs> That reminds me of the one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, just this is just like off Linda's story. Oh, this is like a funny memory from so long ago. But myself and our tour manager were walking. We were in. We were in Spain. We're walking through Spain, and we were just walking past to go get food. And then we heard a cover that we did like years ago. It was of one way or another. Was playing in the bar. We weren't even in it. We were walking past. And then Ollie was like, "What was that?" And then and then we were like, "What?" what was that? That's I'm a British friend of mine. What was that? Like that. Sorry, Ollie. Yeah. Sorry anyway, he's a donut. <laughs> yeah, that that's more like Ollie. Anyways, we and then yes, yeah, so, so a cover of that we did was playing in a random bar in in Spain. That is. So so funny. Which is mind blowing. So that's the next question for me since we're already doing, uh, we're doing parties as well. And my question is what kind of song would you like to hear in a, from our party? So what kind of song should we play? What type of party is it? <laughs> How can we describe our party? party? Uh, well, party? it depends on the topic, but most of the time we're playing like yeah, hardcore, metalcore. Okay, yeah. okay, but we're also I was about to say like, Tyre Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> we're also having like special uh, themes, you know? Yeah, okay. Fair, interesting. Um, I'm not too sure. Are you talking about our songs or just in general? Just like one of your songs and one song in general. I think a good song to hear at like a heavy party would probably be Queens of the Stone Age if you think you ain't a dollar. Or oh, what was it? Oh, I can always forget the name. What? You think I ain't worth a dollar. But I feel like a millionaire. But I feel like a millionaire. That would be a good song to hear at a heavy party, I think. Okay. And one of our songs, probably, depend if it's a heavier crowd, probably something like Amelie, mm -hmm. I think. Those are my votes. Um, what's what's the classic? Like a Day to Remember? Which is oh, one, 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 one. one. That's, um, dun, 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 dun. The That's the one. And, uh, yeah, I think, I guess, Amelie and Saints of the Sin is a couple of the... Heavier songs from the fame that people would know at this point in yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. On the heavy hardcore train, um, Turnstile Blackout. I don't know if yeah that album they released, Glow On last year was just phenomenal, so good. So I'd like to hear that. And then our songs. I don't know. I don't want to say the same things, but Fire. we don't have <laughs> we, don't, we don't have anything <laughs> heavy that's out at the moment. Yeah. Not apart from those ones. Same. Uh, I think Steve said that. Tongue Tied? The live version? Tongue Tied? The know. outro of Tongue Tied live version? I'm going to pass. <laughs> I don't listen to many hardcore bands, so I would, if someone asked me that, I would say, Lyndon, what's your answer? Mm. I already said mine. So that's my answer, yeah, it's Lyndon's answer. I should have said Slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to the last few questions, and it's about your new album. I read the new, your favorite songs or your favorite song from the new album isn't released so far, or is it? Um, we all have similar favorites and different favorites as well at yeah. the same time, so... Sorry, I'm going to the microphone. No, you go. We all have similar favorites and different favorites. <laughs> um, so whoever wants to go first can you, do you that. You can go first. I'm going first. Um, okay, I think across the board, we all love The Alchemist is like a favorite, mm -hmm. Madly Badly Fixed. Another one is two. My, one of my personal ones is Flowers, which is a bit of an outlier on the album. I love that song. Yeah, I think um, for me, Madly Badly Fixed is like one of my favorite songs in the album. Why is that? What makes it so special? <sighs> I think like the origin of that idea I had this like track that Steve always says sounds like a country song or like, I don't know. Uh, country rock. Yeah, country rock song. Anyway, um, I don't know. I just think the process of writing that song and like it coming together was like really special and also it's really fun to play live. That's yeah. probably the main thing. Um, we've been jamming it in the studio and it's just, yeah, it's, it's fun to play. Um, and yeah, Flowers is special as well just because that was like early on in the process of writing um, and it is a quite a unique song uh, or it's like an outlier compared to the others. And then 
The Alchemist would be in my top three just because I love that song. Pressure's on, buddy. Um, yeah, gosh, I have so many favorites on the album. It like obvi- it really like does ebbs and flows depending on the mood. Madly Badly Fixed, definitely one of my faves. I do really love Life in a Cinema. There's this uh, it's a track which has been through a couple of different changes here oh. here and there. Um, and look, also this is there's one song that Sam was really batting for on the album, Faith in Me. Oh, yeah. I keep coming back to it all the time, and it's the most different. So like people say the Alchemist sounds like so different compared yeah. to some, something. You wait till you hear Faith in Me. That's like a whole new flavor which I never thought the fame would release. I didn't think we could release something it like that. Interesting. So that's one to look out for. So why is that so special? Um, well, the origin of that song is kind of funny. I was at the bank and Bobby. my friend Bobby, who I write with, was we were just texting whilst I was waiting at the bank and he sent me this thing and it was it was called like cell phone or mm-hmm. something like that. And it was like a doo wop little instrumental uh. thing. And I was like, oh, I'll write for this for fun when I get home. Yeah. It's just like a Sunday afternoon or something. So I go back and then I do something which I had no intention of being for the fame. I'm like, I, like absolutely nothing. And so I did that. And that beca- that was the demo of Faith in Me. And then I sent it to a manager. I was like, oh, look at this. This is kind of fun. We'll just chat. Like, I did this today. He's like, wow, this is, this is great. I'm like, are you sure? Like, are you sure? He's like, this should be a fair. I'm like, are you sure? And then that song sat in the back of our minds for like six months. Wow. Until we were going to, we were picking the album listing, and it wasn't originally on it. But then Sam was backing it all the way, and then it made it, and it became you something up the just hour. even better than what I thought it could be, and it was wow. super cool. Insane. So since time is running, I guess oh, that's cool. that was the last question. Would you like to add something to your fans here in Germany? Thank you for staying with us. We haven't been back in a while, so it's good to be back. We're excited to play shows. We're excited to see you all again. And to quote Josh Raven, I hope you're happy and healthy and and doing well. But yeah, thanks. And hopefully we'll see you all soon at the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Thank you you for having us. We'll be back, hopefully. Das war unser Interview mit The Fame und ähm, wir hoffen, euch hat es gefallen. 